Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 72. And today we're returning with two very big games with our Canaries. I just take on Aston Villa away at Villa Park in the Premier League and the first leg of our Europa League quarterfinal at home to Juventus. Before we get to the games though, shout out to be getting on off camera. And of course, just the two games to show you off camera after our victory over Porto sent us through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League and our 1-0 win away at Selhurst Park. Uh, we did lose in midweek against Liverpool away at Anfield as our unbeaten streak came to an end. However, you can see by my lineup out there, well, actually, I suppose it was kind of a surprise based on what we've seen throughout the course of the season and the series as a whole, really. Uh, yeah, picked my B team as I continue to test the theory. And to be fair as well, we didn't play that badly. Liverpool deserved the win, don't get me wrong. Uh, Mariba scoring the only goal of the game. But we had a really good chance through Abbey. If he would have scored it, it would have been 1-1 at that stage with about 10 minutes to go. But um, either way, one of the final score, the Reds get the win and are unbeaten run over. But I wasn't really fussed, though. I thought we'd lose regardless. And it meant that my starters would be fully fit, fresh and raring to go for the weekend game, which which was against Watford in the FA Cup quarter final, as we try and defend the first major honour we ever won uh, last season. And despite falling behind very early on in the game, giving away a penalty and the Hornets taking a shock lead, we did respond and in the end won it very comfortably by five goals to one. Uh, Gray got the first of our five, then San Abria got a goal. Always nice to see him score. Uh, Herman Bamba scored his first goal of the season as well. Finally, about bloody time, waiting until the end of March to get his first goal of the campaign. But anyway, the Ivorian finally off the marker after a thumping effort, uh, Mount made it 4-1. And then a minute later, Teddy Gray headed in a Max Aaron's cross to wrap it up with five goals. Uh, sorry, three goals in uh, in five minutes. And for Gray as well, the amount of headers he scored this season is absolutely crazy. Although I guess it's not really when you think about it. He's six foot three with a better heading stat than finishing stat. But uh, in the Premier League right now, as you can see, we're in fourth place despite the loss against Liverpool. And really... I mean, I'll say this right now and I'll say it on camera so you can hold this against me if it turns out to not happen. But I I think if we don't make the Champions League next uh, this year, it, it will never happen in the entire save. I mean, yes, I know we just lost to Liverpool, but look at this. We're two points clear of Bournemouth in fifth and we've got three games in hand. We're three points clear of Manchester United and we've got two games in hand. We're four points clear of City and we've also got two games in hand. We've got a better goal difference record than everyone apart from Manchester United, who we're equal with right now. All the games in hand, really decent form despite the loss to Liverpool. If it's not this year, it's never. And just one thing to show you before we dive into the first of the two games today away at Villa Park. We have just had a new youth intake, but as I always say, do not get too excited. Uh, our best talent this time around is a Danish centre-half called Kasper uh, Fuglslang. F F F Kasper. Um, you know, he's six foot and he, he could be all right, but um, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, a coup a coup has done really well, you know, to actually become a score player. I mean, it's rare enough that I get a player that becomes a score player in my saves, let alone a, uh, a first team player. But um, as always, we, we'd never really get anyone decent from the youth intakes. And this season is no different. So into the game, as you can see, look what happened today in the Premier League. Manchester United losing away at Sheffield United. Man City losing at home to Bournemouth. That's why the Cherries have now gone into fifth place. Liverpool held by Leicester. Everton beating Arsenal. There's been shocks all around the Premier League today. Is there going to be another one in the late kickoff as we travel to Villa Park? Well, let's hope not. So into the game, this will be our team. We're going tiki tackle for the match. And once again... No injury problems. Whisper it. Whisper it. No injury problems. That wasn't whispering. No injury problems. That's more like it. Um, you rarely say that in FM, but uh, there you go. So, yeah, Tiki Taka style of play, and this will be our team's and goal. But for Asana Bria, Pavlovich, Goffrey, and Aris of Kenna, deep line playmaker. You might notice I'm playing him deep line playmaker a lot because I know how so many of you guys just don't believe that Provenzano should play there. So now that Kenna is in, he's got much better defensive stats than Matteo. So, whilst I do want Matteo in the starting 11, I'm okay taking him out for more defensive stability, as I know you guys think that would be a lot better for us as a team. But uh, further forward, long staff amount, our normal CM duo with Bamba supporting Gray and Brewster up top, and on the bench, Henderson, Basia Madu, Larici, Matteo, Almada, and Crowley as well. First game, it's Aston Villa. Win this, and we're five points clear. Come on, you Canaries. Wait, is it five or six? It's five, isn't it? I think it's five. But um, yeah, tons of shocks around the Premier League as I was advancing to today's game. So don't be surprised if this is yet another one. Of course, after our loss to Liverpool as well in our last Premier League game away from home, 
This could be back-to-back -back defeats, but again, I, I want to go five points clear today and still have games in hand. That'll be a big statement of intent, as we'll also have the best goal difference record out of everyone as well. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. It's this season or never. Mount to Bamba, picks it up, and Herman's going to find Aaron's, and Freddie Woodman makes a great save on a one-on-one, -on -one, as we should have gone a goal up early. You know, Max gets forward so much more than in previous seasons, and again, you might have noticed that we now do operate with wing-backs unless we're playing our Gigan press system, so you've got to expect that. But I love the fact in the first few seasons, he just couldn't score, but now you expect him to get four or five goals a year. It's funny, but of all the players we began this save off with, you know, all the young talents that Norwich have, Ben Godfrey, Jamal Lewis, Max Aarons, Adam Ida, I thought Aarons would be the first one to go. I thought he'd be the first one to go. A big team will put a big bid in, he'd become unsettled and he'd leave. But instead, as Aarons drills it in, a right on cue, he gets his fourth for the year, a sensational solo goal. Max has decided to stay. He's continuously signed new contracts. There continues to be interest, but he loves Norwich City and we love Max Aarons. Great first touch to beat his man. Sprints all the way and what a finish as well. 1-0. I do wish his leadership stat was at least around 12 to 13 because I could definitely see this guy being captain. I mean, what is he now? 20, 27 years old. But with seven leadership, it's never going to happen. As Herman Bamba gets another assist and Teddy Gray once again scores with his head. Six foot three, 19 jumping, I think it is, which is just insane. And 15 heading as well. I prefer him moving without the ball in the air as opposed to striking the ball with his feet because he's better in the air. 2-0 Norwich. What a start. Is it 19 jumping? Pretty sure it is. Yeah, look at that. 19 <laughs> jumping at 6 foot 3. 15 heading. I mean, he's got a uh, good off the ball at 18 as well. I mean, this guy, I I'm telling you, I am training his shooting, but I have a real problem in this year's FM of focusing on getting a player's individual attributes up by focusing on them in training. Uh, it never seems to work out for me. Vukas and Vass have spent years trying to train his shooting, but it just never worked out. But um, if, if, he, if he gets to 15, 16, 17 in finishing, he's the best striker in the world. 21 goals to the campaign, 2-0 Norwich city we're we're getting the three points for sure man just taking some starters off here as we're surely gonna get the three points free kick for the canaries don herman's gonna take it floats it in and mount makes it free as bamba gets yet another assist from a set piece you know, I swear 70 to 80% of his assists come from set pieces. And it's so good to have a player like that that is so deadly from dead ball situations. And I said this before, he just reminds me so much of Dimitri Payet. I love Herman. He has underperformed this season, but now he's picking it up. There is interest from Barcelona, but he's got three years left on his deal after this season expires. He's going nowhere, man. Herman, I would say Herman is probably my favourite player in this team. It's a very close one, though, because I love Provenzano. As we fair, I love Santa Bria, and I'm beginning to love Teddy Gray as well. As Aston Villa look for a consolation goal here, and they can't get one as we scramble it away. I just, you know, I said this in the uh, a recent episode. I know it was just so harsh to blow up our team and you know sell Buendia and Lewis and Berger as Harvey Elliott does give the uh, host the consolation goal but it really was the right thing to do it was sad to say goodbye to all those players that have been with us for so many years and even this season you know selling Adam Ida selling Jokic it was sad but this Norwich team we've got now it just feels like our team you know and more like the team I normally build in FM 3-1 the final score, we do lose the clean sheet, we don't need the extra replay, but the Canaries are marching on and going five points clear in fourth place. What's going on here? Okay, there we go. 3-1 the final score, five points clear, and um, yep, I'll say it once again, and I'll say it louder for the boys in the back. If it's not this year, it is never. Five points clear of Bournemouth. Two games in hand. One game in hand on both Manchester clubs and six and seven points clear respectively and have the best goal difference out of the four teams going for that final CL spot. It's It's got to be this year. And to be fair as well, we've got two games in hand on the Reds and we're eight points behind. Win them both and we cut the gap to two points. <laughs> it's got to be this year, man. Surely we don't choke it again. In fact, here's a question for you guys today. Who is your favourite player in this save? You know, with Cardiff, we had so many great players. Pedro Antonio, Helder Goncalves, playing Maria, Carl Zelenia. Um, you know, but of course, Jason was the, the standout, the hero of that save. But what I like about this save is that there isn't just one player that's like the, the, the one star, the one legend of this team. We've just got such a, a great, fun, young side. 
And, you know, honestly, I, I don't even know who my favourite player is. Again, it probably would be Bamber or Provenzano, but Gray's getting up there. I mean, it's just it's just such a fun team, isn't it? I love what we've built, man, and, and Teddy Gray, he's definitely on his way to becoming our favourite in this save. But yeah, t today, guys, in the comment section down below, who is your favourite player in this football manager save? Because, I mean, there's just so many players there could be. There's so many options, so many different players that have interesting backstories and unique ability and, and, and unique characteristics. It's just, it's just such a fun Norwich team. And just before we get to the Juve game, Leicester take on Man City tonight. And I tell you, I, <sighs> keep on saying it, Docky Landers, if it's not this season, it's never. Leicester beat Man City 2-0. We've now got two games in hand on them and remain seven points clear and have a way better goal difference too. Surely, man. Surely we can't bottle this. And of course, there are two routes to the Champions League and this is the other one. The first leg of the Europa League quarterfinal tonight as we play host to Juventus, who, as we know, during this save, have not done especially well. In ninth place in the Serie A right now, still have a really decent team, to be fair. And when you look at their form for the campaign as well, they are in really, really decent form right now. So this could be a very tricky test indeed. Our first meeting in the save, it is, of course, the post-Cristiano Ronaldo era. Guardiola is in charge. Let's see if we can fend off the Spaniard and his Italian side tonight. So no change to our tactics, no change to our lineup. This will be our team once more. Zangrandi in goal, but for a sound of Bria, Pavlovich, Goffrey, and Aaron's of Kenner supporting Longstaff and Mount. Bamba supports Gray and Brewster. And on the bench, Henderson, Basia, Medulla, Ricci, Provenzano, Almada, and Crowley as well. Same performance, please. Same result and a big first leg result. Come on, you Canaries. I know last year we got to the semi-finals. This year I am targeting the final. However, I won't be too disappointed if we go out in the quarters. There'll be no shame in going out to one of the best teams left in the competition, Juventus. And it'll also mean we can focus all of our attention on the Premier League as well. I know we've got the FA Cup semi-finals to come. That's against Manchester City. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but that'll be in the last episode. But yeah, if we do go out, I won't be too beaten up about it because destiny is still firmly in our hands in the Premier League. First highlight, 28 minutes in with Mason Mount driving forward, as he likes to do, and he can shoot and strike from range, but this time an easy save for the Polish goalkeeper Szczesny. Still 0-0, but we've made a far better start tonight. Five shots already, two on target, a little bit less of the ball, but Juventus really yet to get going. As Mason Mount plays a 1-2 with Kenner, and Nohan plays a great ball out wide to Max. Down the right, scored in the last game, and gets the assist in this one. Rian Brewster, 21 goals for the season, 1-0 Norwich. Max Ahrens in the past two or three years has become a great right back. He was previously very good, but now he's great. Lovely boy to the centre, Rian with the first time volley, puts it into the bottom corner. That's why he signed that contract extension. And for some reason, he still hasn't had an England call up yet. Regardless, he don't mind, we don't mind. Norwich in front, we have the lead. Put it this way, no England call ups means that it will never get injured on international duty. But of course, it, it is a bit of a problem in FM when you are managing a uh, smaller reputation team because a lot of the times the players will consider leaving because they want to play on the international level and sometimes they need to play for a bigger team in order to get those sort of call-ups. That has unfortunately been the case for a lot of our players in this save, including Max Ahrens, only the one call-up, Ben Godfrey, only the one call-up, and again, Rian, not a single call-up despite winning the Golden Boot last year and possibly winning it this year as well. 23 minutes to go. Very uneventful game, this one. Juventus have done nothing. Throw for the Canaries as Rian Bruce, the goal scorer, is going to cross to the centre and Sanabria makes it too as Jonathan wraps the night up. I can't believe this. Rudiger comes for the ball, misses the interception and Sanabria punishes him, but... Wow, I mean, I thought Juve would give us a real challenge tonight under Guardiola, but instead they must be focused primarily on this area because this has been routine. Not a single shot, and we're coasting to the victory. If we can see out the game without conceding an away goal as well, that will be huge. But from this free kick, Juventus are on the break, and this could change the whole complexion of the tie here if they finish off this counter-attack. Xerxes through, and he has found the back of the net well. It was 2-0, we were playing sailing, but instead, that could change everything. A deadly, lethal counter-attack from Pep Guardiola's team. Hmm. Xerxes running forward, brilliant finish, no chance for Zangrandi, and they've half the deficit. I don't think they'll fight back to make it 2-2. 
in the final minute. So that will be a real throw if that does become the case. But instead, due to that away goal, if they score in Turin, we'll need a goal as well. Well, it was all smiles and all plain sailing. Instead, let's just calm ourselves down a little bit. Still in the driving seat, but not quite as good as it could have been. A good win, boys. Well done. We get the job done. Back-to-back -back victories today. But uh, they only took two shots in the game and they scored with one of them. That is, again, a bit of a concern knowing in the second leg we might need to score away in Turin. But hey, we got the win. That's the most important thing. And again, we're 90 minutes away from the Europa League semi-finals. We're several points clear in the Premier League as well. Destiny is still firmly in our own hands to qualify for the Champions League. Please, God. Don't let me bottle it again. But that was today's episode of the Football Major Series, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And what we'll do is play just a one game off camera and return with that massive double header that we cannot miss. Juventus away in Turin for the second leg where they are favourites for it. And then, of course, the FA Cup semi final against Manchester City as we aim to defend our first major honour of the save. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for a massive double header very soon.